Hello everyone, and welcome to Biopedia. During episode 66, we talked about the extinction of the dinosaurs. However, there are other mass extinctions we can talk about. I'm going to be defining what exactly a mass extinction is today, but also introducing one of the other mass extinctions. This is the Permian one, otherwise known as the Great Dying. In terms of timelines, the extinction at the end of the Cretaceous took place 66 million years ago, hence its inclusion in episode 66. However, for the Permian extinction, we need to go back quite a bit further. A paper from 1994 lists the Permian extinction as taking place around 245 million years ago. However, more recent figures have listed the extinction as happening around 252 million years ago, give or take a few hundred thousand years. The extinction event is what defined the end of the Permian. This is the geological epoch before the Triassic, and it lasted between 298.9 and 251.902 million years ago. In point of fact, the Permian was the last phase of the Paleozoic, which immediately preceded the Mesozoic Age of the Dinosaurs. In terms of our definitions, the Permian is one of a series of mass extinctions. These involve a large fraction of species dying out rapidly and impacts the entire world in its geographic scope. In the case of the Permian, it took place in less than 200,000 years. We frequently don't know what causes mass extinctions. However, recent consensus says that the reason for the Permian mass death is volcanoes. During the period of this mass extinction, the worst volcanic activity in half a billion years happened. As a matter of fact, 1.6 million square kilometres of what would become Siberia was smothered in a layer of lava which was hundreds of metres in thickness. The carbon dioxide emitted due to this volcanic activity increased the global temperature by 6 degrees Celsius. To expand on this, modelling indicates that carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere might have risen from anywhere between 504,000 parts per million up to 8,000. Subsequently, the temperature at the surface of the ocean rose from somewhere between 22 and 25 degrees to 30 degrees Celsius during the extinction event. During the whole early Triassic that follows, we see huge oscillations in the carbon cycle. The activity of these volcanoes caused a big shift in the climate. This hurt a lot of species which had higher sensitivity to temperature. Moreover, carbon dioxide also dissolves into the ocean and decreases the ocean's pH. This is a brief summary of the process of ocean acidification. Levels of ocean acidification became too high for the majority of species to bear. The higher acidity of the ocean also led to less calcium carbonate being available for coral reefs to use. We also get other consequences from the volcanism, including nutrients such as phosphorus being added into the oceans. This prompted smaller organisms to proliferate and be broken down by bacteria when they died. These bacteria respired oxygen, meaning atmospheric oxygen levels fell. This hurt aerobic organisms and promoted anaerobic bacterial growth. These anaerobes in turn produced toxic hydrogen sulfide, with the chemical formula of H2S. The general picture is that volcanism led to a chain of events that helped bring the great dying into being. The catastrophe happened on land and in the water at the same time. During this event, 96% of all species died out, compared to 80% in the KT event. Trilobites and brachiopods all died out, as well as some tetrapod groups going extinct. In the oceans, more than four-fifths of genera went extinct. It's noted as the biggest catastrophe in terms of ecology and biology in prehistory. It took the world a long time to recover from this event. Clades which evolved quickly, such as ammonoids, radiated within 1 to 2 million years. However, most took until the middle of the Triassic to bounce back. That means there's an interval of about 10 million years where the world is oddly quiet. Fossils of animals and the evidence animals leave behind indicates that animals were smaller in the early parts of the Triassic than what came before or after. This size difference happens in the form of a steep drop at the juncture between the Permian and the Triassic. This demonstrates something called the Lilliput effect. This is an effect where taxa which survive an extinction event become smaller shortly thereafter. 
We see this effect happen a lot during the Phanerozoic, according to a reference cited by the 2007 paper I got this information from. In point of fact, it appears to be a common denominator in all such episodes. The Lilliput effect seems like something we will probably come back to in later episodes, or at the very least, it's a topic we will likely as not see again. Throughout the earlier parts of the Triassic, smaller animals remains the rule. This is probably due to lack of oxygen in the seas and atmosphere, as well as a comparative lack of food. Expanding on the theoreticals of this latter point a bit, food shortages compel populations to become smaller in terms of number of organisms present, or else lowers body size while keeping population size constant, or else there's a decrease in both. Oxygen supplies in the oceans were low in the majority of places for the majority of the early Triassic. In deeper waters, this anoxia continued until the mid-Triassic. However, the authors note that more research is needed for both hypotheses. In the end, it's not all death, doom and gloom in our discussion of the Permian extinction event. This catastrophic event also saw some organisms proliferate afterwards. This included the organisms that were the predecessors of the dinosaurs. This makes sense. After all, as my biological education has taught me, extinction creates a vacuum that radiation and proliferation fills. This is not an episode on the mechanisms of extinction and or radiation, so I will leave a detailed reference discussion of this for another time. That said, the general picture is that the Permian mass extinction paves the way for the era of the dinosaurs until they themselves suffered an extinction event nearly 200 million years down the line. That brings us to the end of today's discussion. As always, thank you all for listening. Feel free to get in touch at the show's email address for any questions, comments, or topic suggestions for future episodes. Until next time, have a great week, everyone. 